Hi guys, uh, welcome back. Um, just a quick update to the heat bed install and the first test. Um, I just completed my first print using this heat bed and it was a the large print that I was showing you on the previous video. Uh, so this is the enclosure that I printed. This is made in ABS. This took over 50 hours and um, yes, yeah, it came out flat and it didn't warp. Um, I held the bed at 110 degrees through the whole print and uh, it maintained that temperature without a problem. So um, yeah, 50 hours at 110 degrees and the bed performed flawlessly. And uh, this finished early hours of this morning. Um, I did have to change the filament halfway through or just over halfway through which you can see a different change in the the filament colour in there. Um, I tried to match it as best as I could but never mind. Uh, it doesn't matter I'm gonna sand this down and paint it to suit the machine that it's gonna fit on but it's definitely uh, solid and strong and flat and uh, it didn't warp which is exactly what I was you know hoping for. Um, I've just had a comment on one of my videos showing the actual uh, the silicone heater and the thermistors that I put on and it was suggested by um, someone to actually install the thermistors touching the plate now yes that is obviously the ideal scenario to actually measure the temperature of the plate is to actually get the thermistors directly on this but the 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 person suggested to mill slots in the plate to run the cables obviously for the thermistor I presume underneath of the heater silicone bed and mill some slots to get some thermistors buried in between the actual heater silicone mat and the plate now uh, there's two problems with that um, I did consider doing it myself but I changed my mind because I've I have experience of heating elements and heating plates and there's one thing that can cause a problem is once you mill a slot in a large heating surface or you you remove material and, and create a channel that plate when it's heated to extreme temperatures 100 plus or whatever it will not expand <coughs> equally all over that slot will cause some problems and over time the plate will warp and it will warp around the slots um, it depends what you're using the plate for whether that's a problem now it'll be a problem for 3d printer users because you're mounting a glass plate on top of that and you want to keep the whole thing flat and uh, if you mill slots in your heater plate um, especially a thin one over time it, it will warp and it will warp enough to you know not keep your glass flat so um, you know by all means if anyone is copying this and wish to put slots in their heater plate to mount thermistors do so but bear in mind that your plate may warp over time because of that slot that you've you've put in there so uh, yeah, that's why I didn't mill slots, and that's why I'm happy for the uh, the thermistors to be where they are now. Obviously, there's the inbuilt thermistor that comes in the silicon heater, which is the one you should use for your operating temperature, which is what I have. Um, but yeah, that's why I added five more thermistors just on the heat mat, just to monitor the heat mat. So. Um, yeah, it's a bit of a, it's a tough decision really, um, you know, the, the heat map, the heat beds that we use originally to start off with, the Mark II, Mark III, the small aluminium heat beds, they have the thermistor actually, you know, buried in the, in the PCB. Now, that is the ideal scenario for measuring your temperature, but to achieve that on this, it's, it's not that easy. There is another problem obviously is if you mill slots and then you stick your heat mat on and insulate it and whatever, if ever there's a problem with the thermistor you're going to have to remove absolutely everything to get to it. So if the thermistor 
goes fails or it goes out of range then you're going to have a lot of problems trying to get to it and replace it um, whereas if, if something goes wrong with this now you know I've just got to lift lift this off take the insulation off replace the thermistors and put it back it'll take me half an hour at most whereas if you mill slots and bury it all in there properly and Ad use the adhesive back in on the silicon heater if anything goes wrong you, you, you try and get that off you, you, yeah it's going to be a challenge and you're going to have a right mess to get it all clean to put it put it back together so um, yeah that's the uh, option for milling the, the plate and installing thermistors directly on it. it it's there if you if you decide to go that way I didn't and I'm glad I didn't so uh yeah, so that's uh, that's my first print anyway, guys. It, you know, it's it's a large object in ABS, and it didn't warp, and uh, it completed successfully, and the bed worked flawlessly for over 50 hours. Um, so yeah, the, that was it. Just an update, really, on uh, on how it went on the first test, and uh, I shall do some more improvements very shortly. And get back to you. Um, one thing I will say though is I did have to change the plate that I was mounting this on. The plate that I mounted it on was uh, PVC. I tried only heating the chamber to about 60 degrees but the PVC warped and uh, my first print of this failed. My first print. So yeah there's the first attempt and uh, stayed on the it stayed down flat okay but basically the whole print was dropping lower and lower and lower because the the uh, what I'd used to mount the heat bed on was slowly warping and dropping down so there's my fail total total fail but anyway so there it is it's uh, it finished a print 50 odd hours at 110 degrees plus and uh, work flawlessly so there you go guys um, updates on more things coming very soon and uh, yeah speak to you soon cheers